Super Mario 64, the game that introduced the world to the third dimension of games. You probably heard time and time again that Super Mario 64 did this and did that, and how much of a masterpiece this game is, but no one really talks about the types of bosses this game has. Like how much would it take for people to talk about how iconic and memorable these Mario bosses are? Like, huh, wait a minute. How many bosses does Super Mario 64 even have? Hmm. 17? Seriously? Ho <laughs> ho! Well in that case, let me tell you some of the bosses for this game have aged a lot. So for today's video, we'll be looking at each boss in Super Mario 64 and ranking them based on how fun and memorable they are. My name is Junior Leva, aka Mr. Awesome, and here's Super Mario 64's Bosses Ranked. Let's get this show on the road. So for this list, I'm going to list the bosses in terms of how I enjoy fighting them. And don't get me wrong, they're all enjoyable, but to be fair, some of these bosses are like that Goomba in World 1-1 in Super Mario Bros. in terms of difficulty, at least for today's standards. I can imagine back in the great year of 1996, these were a revolutionary feat, but not for modern day standards. So, if I wasn't clear before, this list is going to be based on who I found more enjoyable, despite how easy some of these can be, so... As for always, this is my list and it's not yours, but there's always a comment section for your type of list. Kicking off the Super Mario 64 boss rankings is Chill Bully. Honestly, this is probably the easiest boss in the entirety of Super Mario 64. Located in Snowman's Land, the Chill Bully is basically the icy variant of the regular bully seen in Lethal Lava Land. The only difference is, well, he's chill AF. To beat this boss, you have to push it off the platform before it pushes you. It's an epic battle between a plumber and an ice sculpture with legs. Huh, what differentiates this one from the other bullies? Is something you may be asking yourself. Well then, my good viewer, this is on an icy platform, which makes this a lot more easier than those other bullies in this game. And what I find interesting is that there isn't lava here, it just so happens to be extremely cold water, which oddly enough can burn you too. And honestly, as you can see from the footage, getting the star was a little bit harder than me fighting this very fight. And <laughs> I gotta say, the star is what's the real boss here, not the chill bully, but it is what it is. My fellow viewer, I had no idea Big Mr. I was a boss until I researched it in the Super Mario Wiki. There's seriously nothing special about him. It's literally a giant eyeball in the middle of the room. I mean, for God's sakes, can you stop freaking looking at me? It's, it's, it's kind of making me uncomfortable, Mr. Big Eye. And to be quite honest, Mr. Big Eye itself is super easy to beat. It's super dummy, dumb, poopy poop, brain easy types of easy to beat, if that makes any sense. All you have to do is spin around him until he gets dizzy. Big whoop. But actually, what I like about this boss per se, is actually getting to him. Cause that makes a boss battle a little bit worth it if you ask me. You gotta already have the vanish cap, so if you haven't flooded the basement in Peach's castle, you gotta go do that. And then once you obtain the invisibility power up, you got to go to Big Boo's haunt, and then break the blue box, get yourself the invisibility power up, and then you gotta pull these parkour wall jump kicks in order to make it to the roof floor. And if you aren't quick enough, you're gonna lose the invisibility because, well, you know, you need mad skills to get up here. And you actually need the invisibility to fight Mr. Big Guy because he's hidden behind this boo painting. But, you know, once you pass through the painting with the invisibility power up, Big Mr. Eye is just a cakewalk. I don't know why his name isn't Mr. Big Eye. It's, instead, it's Big Mr. Eye. Weird. Back at it again in Big Boo's Hunt, you're out here traversing from outside of the mansion, up the newly formed stairs, and wall jumping your way to the roof. Once you made it up there, 
You go outside the balcony, and there it is, Big Boo. And he's ready to fight you. Again. Big Boo himself is easy to take out, just hit it from behind or ground pound it a few times and he's done. Something I always wonder to myself is, shouldn't I phase right through him when I'm fighting him? It makes no sense that I can physically hit a ghost. I don't think Nintendo understands how ghosts work. At least in Super Mario 64, because in Lugie's Mansion, it's a little different. But honestly, the hardest part of the battle isn't the battle itself, it's after you beat him. Because when you're actually getting the star, it's on top of the roof. And, well, you gotta go get it. So, if you aren't careful enough on your way up to the star, you're gonna end up slipping off the roof and having to traverse up the mansion again. And it can get pretty annoying. What I liked about this boss, it's just super quick, nothing really too crazy. But seriously, why are you getting the stars easier than beating these bosses? Lethal Lava Land is home to the bully species. And, well, as per regular species, there's your regular bullies and your big bully. Big bully over here is bigger, tougher, and a lot more easier to fight than those pesky regular bullies. Big bully's honestly a pushover, N no pun intended. But I'm being serious, it ain't much of a pushover like its cousin Chill Bully, cause he's a real icy hot mess. This one you think it would be more inclined to push you off into the lava much more easily, but no! All you gotta do is really dive or kick in its face a few times and he's done for. Obviously I ranked him higher than Chib Bully cause Big Bully at least gave me some pushback and somewhat of a challenge, cause if you recall, Chib Bully all I did was just basically knock him out. Warm King or as Zabre likes to call him, Kool-Aid Man's Nightmare. What? Yo, this is the last time I'm having Zabre revise a script for me. Honestly, I've never really felt bad for fighting a boss before, but Womp King really had me feeling for him. And yes, I say him, because he's a king, and king means he's a male. The Womp King complains because all we do as people is use them and step on his kind, and honestly, he isn't wrong at all. I mean, think about it. The sidewalk outside is just a bunch of womps. So as a good Samaritan I am, I decided to literally drop Mario's dump truck of an ass onto his back and literally make him go boom. I really like this fight because you can ground pound and clip through him. <laughs> Alright, so I know this isn't a boss, but hey, most of the bosses in Super Mario 64 are for the most part, rehashes. So I decided to throw in Koopa the Quick just to make this list a little bit more spicy. Remember, again, this is my list. I get to do what I want in terms of the ranking. So if you got a problem, there's a comment section down below. But yeah, Koopa the Quick, I'm counting him as a boss because, well, he's, he's big and the big enemies are usually the bosses. Anywho, Koopa the Quick challenges Mario for a race and if you beat him, you get a star. The whole race as a whole is fun, and if you're familiar with Bob on Battlefield, as every veteran Mario should be, the star is just a breeze to get. And it, what I find interesting is that you're out here testing your speedrunning skills for Super Mario 64, and I find that fascinatingly brilliant. Especially for being the second star of the game. I love how this race is with a turtle, because they're supposed to be slow. But apparently Mario's logic does not make sense, so... Yeah. But the race is fun because as I mentioned before, you're out here speed running, you're avoiding everything in your path that can hinder you, and you gotta climb the mountain before Koopa the Quick gets there. I love it. Uh oh, another bully boss. Well, technically it's the same one from the last time, but this time around he came to defend his little friends. It feels like... You're at a playground with a bunch of kids and the kids decided to just gang up on you. Which is kind of awkward because if you're fighting a bunch of kids, um, it'd be kind of messed up to punch them in the face, but... I don't know, self-defense or something? The small bullies are out here bullying Mario and I'll be honest with you guys, these little pests are more annoying to deal with versus the big bully. I, I mean, look, I'm legit getting jumped here, man. But once you put those little bullies in their place, the big bully comes around and defends his homies, 
you know, like all homies should. You should always defend your homies even though it's a losing battle. But obviously too bad because he gets clowned easier than his little homies. I ended up ranking this bully fight higher than the other bully fights in Super Mario 64 because the little bullies here, they actually gave you some real pushback that had me a bit worried. I'm not afraid to say it, I was worried, I thought I was gonna get clowned, but as you can see I didn't, I managed to get the star, so. <laughs> I love this big boo fight. For this fight you have to clear out the boos all over the first floor of the mansion and yeah, this is the same concept as the boss from Big Bully and the bullies where there are little boos but yo, I find it hilarious that you're just coming into these rooms and just literally slaughtering them. It's all like FBI open up! And then boom, they're the big dead. I like it especially because there's a lot of room for error. So, messing up here can literally cost you your life. Plus, there are two hidden booths behind the house that could be a pain to find if you aren't familiar with Super Mario 64. But honestly, in this day and age, who isn't familiar with Super Mario 64? You've got to be really young not to be familiar with Super Mario 64. But once you take care of the little booths, you just go back to the main foyer and clown the big boo. And that's it, you get awarded with the stairs. Oh. Uh, the power star as well, but most importantly the stairs because you need that for to get the other stars in this game So yeah Technically King bob -omb is the very first 3d boss in the span of Nintendo history King bob -omb is very enjoyable from his royal prideful dialogue to his amazing moustache King bob -omb, dare I say is a good way to teach a new player how to maneuver in the third dimension since he serves as a tutorial boss, it's always fun to see newcomers deal with him because they don't kind of, they don't really know what to do. What I find most intriguing is that he gets damaged when you throw him on the arena you're in, but if you throw him out the arena, uh, he takes no damage, which uh, makes no sense because you're literally throwing him farther and stronger at that point. But hey, I'll give him a pass because it's King bob -omb. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, Super Mario 64 is, is perhaps my favorite Mario game of all time, but the fact that there are two Koopa the Quick races totally slipped my mind. The Koopa the Quick rematch is found on Tiny Huge Island, and again, I'll be honest, I totally forgot this race was a thing, and I 100% forgot where this race started. And since I'm used to Koopa the Quick number one, I'm used to the race starting at the very beginning of the stage versus the rematch. This one starts at the very top of the mountain, so for this playthrough, I had to actually look for it. And once you find them, you obviously race them again, and uh, Koopa the Quick is pretty fast this time around. So fast that he actually beat me my first attempt. And when he beats you, he literally clowns you. I've never been beaten in bob -omb Battlefield, so being beaten here is just jarring. And this alone is why I ranked the rematch higher than the first one. Oh, and obviously because it's a bit more difficult too. For this ranking, it's the Big Penguin, or the self-acclaimed World Champion Sledder. I have to say, racing the Big Penguin is very fun, and it's the most fun race in this whole entire game. I mean, come on, you're sledding with a penguin. What's not to love? He's sliding on his tummy and Mario over here? Woohoo! He's sliding on that dump truck of an ass he's carrying around. And on ice. It's mega fun because you're not facing any obstacles and you're just legit sliding and trying your best not to fall off. Pretty wholesome if you ask me. Hell, there's even a shortcut you take, but if you take that shortcut, it's a big no-no because if the penguin finds out, he'll know and he'll be the big mad. The second Bowser fight in Super Mario 64, and honestly, it's probably the most forgettable one out of the three. It's King Bowser in the fire seat. This fight is pretty much the same as the first one, but with Bowser tilting the arena. Big whoop. I'll get to the first Bowser fight pretty soon anyway, so... NEXT!
Okay, so let's take some booze, let's take some paintings, an empty merry-go-round carousel with fire, and boom! We got the big boo merry-go-round fight. This is the best boo fight in Mario 64, just because the atmosphere is pretty much unique and different, and it feels like a boss rush. The floor spins and the boos keep popping out these paintings, and I gotta say, it's super fun just to take them out one by one. Once you clown the little boos, the big boo comes out and you clown him. This fight is just very cool because it's in the basement with that creepy music. Ooh, very spooky. This right here is probably the most iconic Bowser battle in history. King Bowser in the Dark World. Yes, the OG Super Mario Bros. Bowser fight is super iconic, but to me personally, it doesn't come close to this bad boy right here. Shit, Bowser himself speaks to you for once. Every fight before this was just silence. But we all know why this battle is iconic, and it's because of that old tail grab and spin along with the bye bye Wait, what? Bye bye Yeah, the Shindo version of Super Mario 64 changed this because we know that So long, gay Bowser! is the best send-off Bowser will ever get in his lifetime. Have you ever thought that Mario himself might be a villain for a change? Well, that's what it feels like for Wiggler, a tiny huge island. For this battle, you literally have to ground pound the roof of this poor Wiggler's home. And in return, you're flooding it. I feel bad for this Wiggler because I'd legit be pissed too. And it's not his fault. He has the power of the Power Star at his disposal. He didn't even want it in the first place. Well, the reason why I put this fight so high in the Super Mario 64 boss rankings is because this Wiggler isn't playing around. He wants to literally end Mario. He's out here directly attacking him. Nay. He's body slamming him. Dude, I was legit concerned fighting the Wiggler because I didn't know where he was coming from and honestly, I was running out of coins to use for health. All in all, this fight gave me a 20 plus year experienced seasoned veteran of Super Mario 64 a small run for his money. In other words, I was shook. I Rock to me is always fun to fight. I mean, look at the concept of it. It's a rock hand with an eye on it. And there's two of them. I love this fight because it feels like a 3D version of Master Hand from Super Smash Bros. The fight takes place inside the pyramid in Shifting Sandland, and there's only one way of getting there, and that's blowing up the top of the pyramid. Once you're in battle, the I Rock tries to slam you with its fist or outright push you off the arena. Which can be dirty, because a mistake like that can cost you in battle. What's cool about the IROC is that it has a very obvious weak spot, and if you if you really can't tell, it's the eye in the palm. So you gotta dive in and attack it. And timing is crucial for this battle, since you know there are two hands, and while you're busy with one hand, the other hand could come and just clown you. This one should have been obvious. The best boss battle in Super Mario 64 hands down goes down to King Bowser in the sky. It's the third and final Bowser battle along with being the final boss of this game. And let me tell you, this fight is epic. From its music, arena, and ramped up difficulty, you'll have a good time fighting this Koopa King. Now this battle is a tad bit more difficult than the other Bowser ones merely because you have to throw Bowser into the spike mines three times, as opposed to one like in the other two battles. Bowser will throw shockwaves with his stomps and to be fair, it can get a little difficult dodging these shockwaves. And like in previous battles, he'll throw fire and try to tackle you. Plus, once Bowser is hit twice, he'll shake up the arena and it'll legit reform the arena into a shape of a star. And for this last attack, It'll be a tad bit harder to launch Bowser onto the mines since you need more power and better timing to obviously get him to hit the mines. But all in all, once you defeat Bowser, he gives you the Jumbo Star and Mario sends himself to see Princess Peach. 
Thank you guys for watching this video. For those of you that reached the end, let me ask you, what's your boss ranking for Super Mario 64? I know mine is a little different, but I want to hear yours down below in the comment section. A huge thank you to my YouTube members. You guys put that pizza in my pepperoni and those lovely people wearing the Mr. Awesome merch. You guys are awesome. Make sure to get your very own Mr. Awesome merch in the link down below to be featured here on the end screen. And as always, stay golden. Please, wash your hands. <laughs>